So after you visited the Normandy American Cemetery, Utah Beach, Point de Hoc, and the other must-see sites associated with the D-Day invasion, you may wonder what you'll eventually regret not seeing. There are many amazing and memorable things to see, but too often tours and tour buses end up going to museums that pay the tour buses to visit. So here's my list of the top five things you should see while you're in Normandy that you may not see on a tour or that you may otherwise not be aware of. The Maisie Battery. Located just 25 minutes from the American Cemetery and Monument, it is a recently discovered World War II artillery battery built by the Nazis. Gary Stern, a British historian, found an encoded map in some surplus military clothing, and the map identified a possible hidden Wehrmacht military complex that wasn't identified on any official military records. In 2004, he started digging in some underbrush, and under three feet of soil, he found a completely undisturbed military battery that has been locked in time for decades since the war, with helmets, ammunition, guns, just like it was left in 1944. While it doesn't look like much when you first pull into the parking lot, you'll be able to visit these newly discovered bunkers, touch some of the German field guns, and walk the trenches and go inside some of the best preserved remnants of World War II. If you're into military history, Stern has received a lot of attention from historians because this finding can change the official narrative of the Rangers' success at Point du Hoc and may answer some of the biggest unresolved questions that nearly ruined the D-Day invasion, which is, where were the big guns that caused so much havoc on Omaha Beach? It's quite a fun place to visit, to spend a couple hours exploring all the bunkers, tunnels, and trenches. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being a must-see, this is a strong 9. The Bayou Tapestry. About 10 minutes east of the Normandy Cemetery, is the city of Bayeux. It is the home of one of the most historically important and unusual pieces of art. Europeans flock to see this because they know of its historic significance, but Americans are not usually that familiar with it. But it's so iconic, it has been spoofed by The Simpsons and has multiple references in movies like Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, plus other movies as well. What it is, is an ancient embroidery showing 11th century pictures of how William the Conqueror won the Battle of Hastings. It was created for a mostly illiterate population to teach them about this historic battle. What makes it worth seeing for yourself is that it's about 230 feet long and was finished, they estimate, in the year 1070, making it about 950 years old. Even by today's standards, any piece of art 230 feet long and 950 years old is significant and is worth learning a little bit more about. Somehow, incredibly, over the centuries, it has survived neglect, mistreatment, willful defacement, abuse, and even being cut up into pieces. It has been coveted by conquerors and would-be conquerors, including Napoleon and Adolf Hitler, he wanted the tapestry for his grand post-war Fuhrer Museum. It was among thousands of masterpieces he targeted. The Nazis tried everything to get it back to the fatherland, but due to some incredible efforts by the French resistance and even a German officer, the tapestry was rescued from the Nazis. There's a great story in the book The Monuments Men, but it's not referenced in the movie by the same name. So, on a 1 to 10 scale, this is definitely a 9.5. I highly recommend that you see it. Breakhor Manor and the Dick Winters Memorial. For fan of Stephen Ambrose's Band of Brothers, you're familiar with Major Dick Winters, the commander of Easy Company, 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division. There's a memorial commemorating what Winters and his men did at the assault near Breakhor Manor on D-Day. 23 paratroopers overcame about 60 Germans to shut down four key howitzers that were aimed at Utah Beach. The success of this assault is credited for saving hundreds of American lives. 
Winter's genius battle plan is used today to teach combat tactics and is a classic example of what small unit tactics and good leadership can do to overcome a larger enemy force. For those who don't know, Winters was a charismatic and compassionate leader who entered the army as a private and returned home after the war as a major. And just a quarter mile from the Brakor Manor Memorial is this memorial, a statue honoring Winters. It's the only statue originally and begrudgingly approved by Winters before he passed away in 2011, on the condition that it recognize all the junior line officers who helped win the war. It's officially called the Richard D. Winters Leadership Monument. You can find it on Highway D-913. It's exactly 1.7 kilometers northeast of saint marie de mont On a 1 to 10 scale, I'm giving both of these an 8, simply because they are only monuments and it won't take long to visit. But if you're a fan of Band of Brothers, this would definitely be a 9. The Paratrooper Museum and Dead Man's Corner. Opened in 2004, this small but well-organized museum is about 25, maybe 30 minutes from saint marie It's dedicated to all paratroopers, but especially the 101st and the 82nd Airborne Divisions who dropped on the Carentan Peninsula in June 1944. The biggest reason to see this museum is to experience the incredible flight simulator. At first, you're escorted into a briefing room where a virtual U.S. Army officer gives you a rundown on the D-Day invasion. You then board and buckle up inside the real airframe of a C-47 troop transport plane. With video screens simulating the windows of the aircraft, you hear and feel the rumble of the engines on takeoff and watch the British countryside pass by. Then you see waves of aircraft assemble in preparation for the invasion. You feel simulated anti-aircraft fire getting hit and watching other planes get hit and go down. And then you feel the rapid descent into an emergency landing with realistic smoke and the heat of the fire. It's crazy, but really very cool. You'll just wish it had lasted longer. It's kind of a sobering experience and almost gives you a sense of how a paratrooper might feel or have felt on D-Day. Another thing I ought to warn you about, the gift shop is amazing with a large selection of military paraphernalia, including authentic and reproduction uniforms, posters, airborne souvenirs. It alone is worth the trip. On a scale of one to 10, I'm giving this an 8.5. St. Mary Glees. This small French town has two claims to fame. In the early morning of June 6, 1944, it was the first town liberated during the D-Day invasion. Its second claim to fame was due to a parachuting mishap and was made famous by paratrooper John Steele in the film The Longest Day. Steele managed to get his chute caught on the steeple of the church. He hung there during much of the fighting, watching for almost two hours as the fighting went on below him. The Germans eventually realized he was still alive and they got up there and cut him down. He was a prisoner briefly, but later rescued by the Americans. You can see an effigy of John Steele hanging from the steeple of this church, and it's there in his honor. Make sure you go inside, though, as there's a beautiful tribute to the paratroopers in stained glass. You'll also find many other interesting museums within walking distance of the church, so on a 1 to 10 scale, I'm giving this an 8. We have many more videos coming about important places you should see in Europe that you otherwise may not know about. So just subscribe to make sure you're notified when we post each new video. 